Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book Heaven Books. This video is my pile of possibilities for the brand new readathon, People April. It's a readathon that I'm co-hosting with the wonderful Roz, it's Callie Danling about the books, and it is all about reading non-fiction that is about people. So people who existed, people who are still existing. So biographies, memoirs, autobiographies, diaries, letters, anything that is about real people. So, um, just in case you haven't seen the announcement, I will leave a link in the description box below. And I will also uh, repeat the prompts. Um, I'm not going to explain them, that's done in the announcement video, but just as a quick reminder, our prompts are very broad, they are to be interpreted in the way that you want. So the first one is, someone will remember us, I say, even in another time, by the poet Sappho. Let them eat cake, by Marie Antoinette. Have Patience, Go Where You Must Go in Hope by Martin Luther King. Stupid is Knowing the Truth, Seeing the Truth, but Still Believing the Lies by Morgan Freeman. Uh, so, uh, as I said in the announcement video, these quotes are apocryphal. These people never said that. Uh, that's because we have a, uh, there's a bit of imposter syndrome when we're starting a new readathon. We don't know if it's going to take or not. So uh, that's the reason for the apocryphal quotes. But you can do whatever you want with these prompts. You don't have to read a biography of Marie Antoinette or Martin Luther King. Just It's just to inspire you. Just use the prompts the way you want. So, uh, what will I read? I don't know. There's one that I know for sure. It's this one. It is The Five, um, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper. This is our group read. If you want to join us on Voxer, I will leave the information in the description box. It is Roz who is in charge of the Voxer group, so you send her a message saying, hi, I'd like to be part of the group read, and she'll add you to the group read. Uh, we have divided it in four parts. Uh, the pages that are, um, they are not quite the same in the North American edition and the British edition edition that Roz has. So I'm going to leave in the description box the um the, the, the how we divided the book. Uh, basically, we divided it in four, four weeks. And uh, however, you can read at your own rhythm because th there are no spoilers. We, we know that all these women are going to be killed by Jack the Ripper. Um, so so that there's no real spoiler in there. So you read at your own pace. If you want to read the entire book in one weekend, you're welcome to do that. If you want to space it out over the whole month, you're welcome to do that too. So uh, that's one book that I know I'm going to read. And and I'm very excited about it. So uh, the five. Um, okay, for the other books <laughs> that are my pile of possibilities, it's not a TBR. I'm not going to read all of these books because I've gone just a little bit overboard uh, to the point that, that uh, I've decided to do something different. Instead of hauling every book and showing it to you, I'm going to take the phone to the book rather than the book to the phone. It's going to be... Um, easier <laughs> because I came back I have I think about 20 books from the library I have books of my own I've reorganized my shelf there to include the biographies um, I have other stuff too but mainly it's biographies there and um, yeah so I'm going to take you through that and then I have plenty of possibilities on Scribd um, so th these one I don't know yet how I'm going to film that but I am now going to take you to the floor where all the books that I borrowed from the library are. As you can see, I went slightly overboard with books borrowed from the library. Um, there's not a chance that I'm going to read all of this um, because th these are not the only books that I want to read. I want to read also books that I own and books from script. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to present each book briefly because I haven't read them. So there's only so much I can say about them. Perhaps you'll find something that interests you too. So, uh, I'll start here with this pile. Um, the Tears of a Man Flow Inward, Growing Up in the Civil War in Burundi by Pacific Iran, Kun Iran Kunda. Um, so, the title pretty much says it all. This is a memoir um, of a man who grew up <laughs> in the Civil War in Burundi. Uh, why am I repeating this? Um, so, this okay, which, which prompt could this book fit? Because you can go this way too. You can use the prompts to inspire you to find some books, but you can find some books and try to figure out how they fit the prompts. Uh, so this fits the last prompt, the one, uh, the quote with Morgan Freeman, because Morgan Freeman is alive as opposed to the other three people uh, that, that we used for quotes. Um, and this man is still alive. Uh, it could also fit this third prompt uh, with Martin Luther King, the, the story of a man who had to overcome struggles uh, and difficulties. So 
there's that. It's, it's rather short. It's uh, about 250 pages. And most of the books are rather short because uh, that way I can read more. <laughs> uh, Gone, A Girl, A Violin, A Life Unstrung by Min Kim. Uh, so Min Kim started started to play the violin when she was very young um, and she spent hours and hours every day playing the violin. And then one day when she was a young woman, her violin got stolen and she suddenly found herself uh, bereft that there was a hole in her life. She didn't really know who she was without a violin. So this is the story of, uh, this is her memoir of that period of her life. And not just that, I suppose it's also about learning the violin. Um, so this is uh, the two books together. These were books, uh, the, the second one, the, the, the second one. Um, this was one that we suggested for our group read. So uh, the first one of the autobiography is this, uh, Things I Don't Want to Know by Deborah Levy. And then the second one is uh, The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. Uh, you, you don't need to read the first book to read the second book, but uh, given how short it is and the, the font is just... It's just really big. So it shouldn't be a problem to, to read both. So this is uh, a memoir, uh, a memoir that is about writing, that is about uh, life in general. I think it's sort of, a, it's a memoir meets essay. It, it's kind of an essay on life in general and reflections and things like that. Um, oh, I forgot to say which prompt it could fit. Uh, so obviously it fit the first prompt because Sappho was a woman writer. Um, and I forgot also to say which prompt uh, this one could fit. Uh, which prompt could it fit? It could fit, uh, well, again, it could fit the first prompt of the memoir of uh, the woman artist. So uh, yeah, the first prompt is well represented. Uh, next, another book that we had suggested for the group read, The Women I Think About at Night, Traveling the Paths of My Heroes by Mia Kankimeki. Um, so this book was originally written in Finnish. This is a story of a, a memoir of a woman who decided to quit her job, sell her apartment and travel the world uh, to find the women that she admired. Th this book fits actually every prompt. So The Women I Think About at Night, it's a very sapphic uh, title. Uh, Mia Kankimaki, she wrote in Finnish. Finnish. So this book is a translation. Marie Antoinette, she was a German who lived in uh, in France. So she was a German. She was Austrian. But her first language was uh, German. So she lived in a second language. So it fits the second prompt. Um, the, the third prompt, go where you must go. Well, that says travel. So this book fits. And uh, as uh, as the first book that I mentioned, Mia Kankimaki is alive. So it fits the fourth prompt too. So that's a four, four for one. Uh, next, I will move this closer. Don't Think, Dear, on Loving and Leaving Ballet by Alice Robb. So this is a new release from 2023. Um, it's uh, it's about a woman, Alice Robb. She was a student at the School of American Ballet. She did not become a ballerina. So this is, uh, this is a memoir of her experience as a ballerina. And I think she also uh, uses other... Ex uh, other um, other ballerinas uh, tales because there is quite a big bibliography at the end um, here so she consulted a lot of books so I think there's a lot of research too uh, in that memoir it's not just uh, just her thoughts it's also um, the thoughts of other people um, so which prompt could it fit well uh, ballet was invented at the court of Louis XIV in France so obviously it fits the second prompt very well Word by Word by Corey Stamper. I don't remember who rec recommended me this book, but I it was recommended by a commenters on, on Booktube. Um, so this is a memoir of a woman who works for, I believe it's the Oxford Dictionary. And she talks about how dictionaries are made and her experience as uh, somebody who works in the... Um, in the dictionary world. So perhaps this book is also a bit linguistics. Uh, it's not just memoir, but uh, yeah, it, it touches upon other subjects. I think that's a great thing about memoirs. They can touch upon many subjects. It's not just the life of a person. It's also, um, it's also the, um, the life, not just the life, but the story of uh, what they do in life. So um, yeah, that, that's, that could be quite interesting. And I think the prompt it fits best is the first one, uh, because Sappho was a poet and words, uh, words are important in poetry. So word by word. Uh, next, Bound Feet and Western Dress by Pang Mai Natasha Chang. So this is a part memoir, I think, and part biography. Uh, the author tells the story of her great aunt, 
who lived in Shanghai in the early 20th century. Uh, this woman was a pioneer in her society. Uh, she was one of the first to go through a uh, Western style divorce. She was at the head of the, oh, what's the name of the bank? Uh, will I find it? Uh, will I find it? Um, the Shanghai Women's Saving Bank during the 1930s. Um, so if you can read quickly, it shows that this woman had a very interesting life. Um, so this is a memoir about a memoir biography about uh, changing of times, the changing of culture, a revolution also, uh, I guess, um, um, depending on when she left China, when this woman left China, perhaps she went through the uh, communist revolution. I don't know. So uh, again, this book fits many prompts. This one is a biography, The Gambler Wife, uh, A True Story of Love, Risk, and the Woman Who Saved Dostoevsky by Andrew D. Kaufman. So this is the biography of uh, the writer Dostoevsky, uh, of his wife, um, because without her, he wouldn't have been much. So it's a bit of uh, the woman behind the great man. It was her. Uh, so that, that I love Dostoevsky, so I'm sure would be interested in reading uh, the story of his wife's life. Okay, next little pile of books. Uh, Wave, a memoir by Sonali, do I know how to pronounce that name, Derani Yagala. Uh, this woman was in Sri Lanka uh, during Christmas time in 2006 with her husband and her children. And then the tsunami hit. She survived, but she never saw her husband or her children again. So this is a memoir of the events and also the aftermath, uh, how, she, um, how she grieved her, her previous life and her family. Um, oh, I guess there's a lot of tragedy in that little pile. Uh, so this one is in French. It's been translated in English. The title in English is The Book I Never Wanted to Write. Uh, the author, Erwan Larer, is, um, is a novelist. Uh, however, I have to admit, I've never read any of his novels and I've never heard of his name before I picked up this book. Uh, this is a memoir of the events, uh, the terrorist attack uh, on the Paris restaurants and the Bataclan in 2015. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's probably going to be uh, quite sad, quite a tearjerker. And just right next to it on the shelf, I found this book. It was a uh, one minute forty nine seconds. Um, it's not translated in English. This one I I checked, and it's not translated in English. Um, the author Riss is a cartoonist for Charlie Hebdo, and he survived the attack. And this is his memoir of that day and the aftermath. Oh, this one, uh, a bit more, um, a bit more, uh, less tragic, let's say. Madame Claude, The Secret World of Pleasure, Privilege and Power. So Madame Claude, she was the head of a finishing school in post-World War II Paris. And because of that, uh, she, she was sort of the, the matchmaker of the rich. But she was not just that. Um, it's the second paragraph here that really got me. Born Fernand Grudet, a poor Jewish girl in the aristocratic chateau city of Angers, the future madame led a life of high adventure, resistance fighter, concentration camp survivor, gun mall of the Corsican mafia, and erstwhile streetwalker, before becoming the ultimate broker between beauty and power. She harnessed the emerging post-war technology of the telephone to create the concept of the call girl. But Madame Claude wasn't just selling sex. She was the world's ultimate matchmaker, the Dolly Levy of power elite. So I thought this sounded so interesting. I decided to pick up the book. And again, I forgot to say how the uh, the different books fit the prompt. Uh, so this book fits the prompt, Marie Antoinette, of course, because uh, she's French. Um, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, and the other two books, they also fit the, the second prompt because they are in French, uh, but they also fit the second prompt because, uh, like Marie Antoinette, the, these people they went through um, life-shattering events. Uh, however, Marie Antoinette did not survive them, but these two did. Uh, but it does fit the second prompt very well. And uh, here, the wave, uh, the grief memoir. Uh, well, it's, I don't know if it's a grief memoir, but it's a memoir of uh, rebuilding your life after shattering destruction. Um, it, it could be. I would fit it with the third prompt, uh, with the word hope, because I think there's hope uh, at the end of the memoir. I haven't read it, so of course, I don't know. Maybe the person's completely depressed, and perhaps, uh, I hope not, but who who knows? Maybe she, she she's completely miserable. But I think this memoir is about hope in a way. Um, 
And then I'll move closer to the last big pile of books. Okay, so these are the biggest books probably, and I may not read them all. Uh, so the first one, uh, the title the, in English is Shake Hands with the Devil. So the original is in English, this one is a translation. And uh, it is the memoir of General Romeo Dallaire, uh, who was at the head of the Blue Helmets in uh, Rwanda in 1994 when there was the genocide. So this is his account of the awful events of 1994. Um, Touching My Father's Soul, A Sherpa's Journey to the Top of the Everest by Chamling Tenzing Norgai and Broughton Coburn. Uh, so Broughton Coburn, I suppose, is the uh, ghost writer who's not really the ghost, uh, who, who's not that much of a ghostly presence, presence since he is uh, right on the cover. Uh, so a Chamling Tenzing Norgai, so uh, it's, he's the man on the cover. He is a Sherpa. He leads people to the top of the Everest and his father was one of the first to do that. His father was one of the two men who reached the top of the Everest uh, before everyone else. He uh, led um, Sir Edmund Hillary to the top of the Everest. So this is uh, the memoir and biography, I guess, made by the son. And also uh, in this book, um, the author talks about his experience in 1996 when there was a catastrophe that killed a lot of people at the top of the Everest. Uh, if you've read Into Thin Air by John Krakauer, um, this could be considered a companion piece. So, um, yeah, so th this, um, this book could, uh, could fit very well the third prompt, go where you must go. Uh, I don't know why people feel the need to go to the top of mountains, but I guess they, they must feel like they have to go. So it fits the third prompt very well. Another ballet book, Swan Dive. Uh, this one was suggested by the uh, by the computer, I guess, uh, by the algo algorithm at the library. Uh, the previous one, uh, Don't Think Dear, it was, uh, because it was a new release, I had to put a hold on it. And meanwhile, this is, the library suggested, uh, while you wait, you may be interested in this. And I thought, yeah, it does look interesting. So I decided to borrow it. So uh, this one, this ballerina did make it to the big stage. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so this could fit uh, the prompt of the arts, the prompt of France. Uh, it fits plenty of prompts. <laughs> Okay, another sad book. Uh, this one, the title in English is Even the Silence Has an End, and the author is Ingrid Betancourt. Um, you may have heard of her. She was in the news when she was, mainly when she was liberated. She was in the news all over the world. She was abducted in Colombia by uh, the rebel forces. I don't know their name in English. In French, it's F-A-R-C, FARC. Um, and she she remained as a hostage for over six years in the jungle. So this is her memoir of her experience in the jungle. It's very long. It's 700 pages. I don't know if I'm going to read it because if I read this, it means that I'm not going to read other of the uh, other books. So, um, yeah. So th this book, uh, which one could it fit? Which prompt could it fit? Well, the, the French prompt, of course, the second prompt with Marie Antoinette in France, uh, the fourth prompt because uh, Ingrid Betancourt is alive, uh, but also the third prompt, perhaps of hope, of resilience. Um, uh, I think it fits that well. And finally, um, the last book that I have from the library, a classic biography of Catherine de' Medici uh, by Leonie Frida. Uh, so Catherine de' Medici was a queen of France, so obviously it fits the second prompt very well. Uh, she was the wife of King Henry II, and when she got married, uh, her husband was not the heir to the throne, it was someone else. However, um, the eldest son died, so it's the second one who became king of France. And the second one also, Henry II, he died rather young too. So uh, the next king of France was Francis II, and it was Catherine de' Medici's son. He was very young too, so she was a regent. And then Francis II died, and he was succeeded by Charles, I never know the number, I think it's Charles IX. Um, and um, he was he was a child too, so she she remained a region. And uh, by the time the third son got to the throne, she was not regent anymore, but uh, she she remained a a big influence on French politics and the government, even though she was not officially the ruler of the kingdom. Um, it was under her regency that uh, the massacre of the Saint Barthélemy, where Protestants were killed, and butchered, I should say, um, that happened under uh, her regency. So uh, that's it for the library books. Uh, now I'm going to move to the uh, books that I have on my shelves. 
So this is my little shelf of books that I've reorganized to include a lot of biographies and memoirs. It's not all that I have. I have others, but I don't think I will read the others. So I just put the ones that I'm most likely to read. Um, let's get closer. Um, so the first candidate, a classic biography of Shakespeare, Will in the World, How Shakespeare Became Shakespeare by Stephen Greenblatt. Um, here it says National Book Award finalist. So... I guess it's a good book. Cook, The Extraordinary, Extraordinary Voyages of Captain, Captain James Cook by Nicholas Thomas. I don't know how to speak anymore. So I guess this is a biography of James Cook. Um, I suppose it covers all of, all of his life, but even if it just covers the voyages, I think it fits. Uh, the People's Artist, Prokofiev's Soviet Years by Simon Morrison. Um, so, uh, well, the title pretty much says it all. This is a classic biography and it's about the composer Prokofiev, uh, the, his last years in the Soviet Union. Um, oh, and I forgot again to say how the books fit the prompts. But I think you have an idea by now what they, the, what type of prompts, uh, how, how I use the prompts. So uh, unless there's something particularly interesting, I'm not going to mention the prompts necessarily. Uh, a Train in Winter, An Extraordinary Story of Women, Friendship and Survival in the World in World War II by Caroline Moorhead. So this is the story of women who were deported to concentration camps from France to concentration camps in um, Germany or Eastern Europe during World War II. Um, yeah. uh, the next one, Mad Enchantment. Claude Monet and the Paintings of the Water Lilies by Ross King. Uh, so I'm, consider I'm considering this a biography of Monet. It's probably a bit art history, but the man's name is in the title, so for me it's good enough. So I say this is a biography. Um, I'm not going to move the last one, otherwise all the other books are going to fall. Uh, but uh, here we have Putin's People, uh, how the KGB took how the KGB took back Russia and then took on the West by Catherine Belton. Uh, so then again, is it really a biography? I don't think it's a biography of Putin. It would be a biography of the people surrounding him. Uh, but uh, Putin's name is in the title. So even if it's more politics or more um, current affairs, I say it fits the, it fits the spirit of the readathon. Uh, next, uh, this is a book that I've mentioned uh, for my March tea pile of possibilities for her story a -thon. This is a self-published book about a woman who lived in Ottawa. Uh, she was a nun and uh, she basically founded uh, the convent and uh, that became the hospital of Ottawa. So this is an old uh, painting of Ottawa, these buildings. They still exist. The, cath the cath cathedral is still there. Um, this building also exists almost as is, not quite. I think it's now a government building. And this building, which was the convent slash hospital, it became Ottawa's general hospital. So it became much bigger. It probably like it would it would be the biggest of the four buildings now. Uh, but it, uh, the four, the three buildings, <laughs> it would be the biggest of the three. Uh, but yeah, and the author is uh, Michael McBain. So um, yeah. Uh, next is a book that is not translated in English. I found it at the uh, Montreal Book Fair uh, that I attended in the fall. This is the memoir of a man who decided who decided to uh, create little free libraries and um, and place them where you don't expect them. So in the wild, in the woods, uh, in fishing camps and hunting camps and uh, uh, in on hiking routes and things like that. So uh, in case people find themselves in the middle of nowhere with a lot of time on their hands and no books to read, they will have a little free library they could use. So it sounded super interesting. Um, next one, uh, we have Four Queens, the Provencal Sisters Who Ruled Europe by Nancy Goldstone. Uh, the title pretty much says it all. It's useful with nonfiction. Uh, so uh, this one also fits the uh, Historathon 2023 readathon. Uh, starting in April, the period from April to June is the year 500 to 1500, so the Middle Ages. So this one fits both readathons easily. Uh, next one. Uh, oh, the one. Oops. Never mind, they're still standing. So uh, this one, uh, the original title is in English. Um, I'm going to try to find it. Is it this page? Next page? It's normally written somewhere. Let's see here. Uh, original title, Search of the Maya. So uh, that's the original title. I think I bought this a long time ago. I don't remember what it's precisely what it's about. I think it's a biography of a man who 
either worked, well, probably did both, but uh, either discovered cities under the jungle, but more probably, I think it's about uh, a man who contributed a lot, uh, because I know it was a teamwork, uh, but who contributed a lot to the deciphering of the Maya script. So I think that's what it's about. I don't remember. Um, I'll just put it here. Uh, next, I have two memoirs of World War One that I, are part of a box set that I bought last year. So this is A Woman's Experience in the Great War by uh, Louise Mack. And the next one is Nothing of Importance by Bernard Adams. So this one, the top one, is um, uh, The Memoir of a Soldier. And this one is The Memoir of a Journalist, a Female Journalist, which was uh, something rather new at the time. Um, Triste Tropique by Claude Lévi-Strauss. I have it in French, but the title in English is the, exactly the same. Uh, so this is the memoir of uh, this anthropologist who went uh, to South America. Uh, he was a Jew living in France. He left France just in time to, uh, to, to survive, to save himself. And uh, he worked uh, mainly in South America. I think he worked elsewhere too, but all, mainly in South America, uh, documenting the language, the way of life of, um, of indigenous people in South America. I think in Brazil most. Uh, so it's a classic of anthropology, uh, anthropology and of uh, memoir writing. And uh, the last one is uh, Papillon by Henri Charrière. So this one fits the fourth prompt very well, where uh, we sort of uh, are um, concerned about the thin line between truth and myth. Uh, this is uh, largely mythical. So this... Uh, this memoir, so this is the story of a man who was condemned for murder in France and he was deported to a penal colony, I guess, um, on an island north of uh, South America, so just off the coast of Guyana. And uh, he escaped. And um, this is his story of how he lived in the, how he survived in jail and um, how he escaped. But large parts of it are either completely invented or if it happened, it did not happen to him. So it's largely apocryphal. So I guess it fits all our prompts because the memoir is probably as apocryphal as um, the quotes that we used. <laughs> uh, and the other books that are not memoirs, they're just there because it's convenient for them to be there. Um, so that's it for this little segment. And I'm back in front of the camera for the last segment of this probably never ending pile of possibilities video. Um, sorry, I'm just very enthusiastic and there are just so many possibilities. Uh, so this last segment, I want to talk about some of the books that uh, I may read from script. So um, I made a list, perhaps it would be like this, you can see more. Uh, so I made a list of books on script, of biographies and memoirs. Uh, if I was any in any way technologically inclined, I would put covers of the books here. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that because there's just too many books. Well, I'm not going to name them all because I think I put 50 books on my list and it's just too much. I'm just going to mention some that, that, that I think I'm more likely to read or perhaps that I think could be uh, of interest. Uh, so the first one, In the Land of Invisible Women, A Female Doctor's Journey in Saudi Arabia. It is by Kanta Ahmed. Um, the Art of the Heist, Confessions of a Master Thief by Miles J. Connor Jr. and Jenny Seiler. Uh, so this is about, uh, it's true crime, art theft, it's always interesting, I think. Um, Borrowed Times, an AIDS memoir by Paul Monette. Uh, once again, I'm not going to say how they fit the prompts. I think you get the idea of how to use the prompts and you can use them in any way you want. Uh, so, yeah, so I said, um, the, the last one I mentioned, Borrowed Time, an AIDS memoir by Paul Monette. Um, I, it, you don't really need any explanation about that. It's just the story of a man who uh, lived during the AIDS um, crisis in the 1980s and 1990s. Um, and this is his story of how he lived through that. Um, I think, I believe that the author died of AIDS uh, a few years after having written that memoir. And perhaps not even years, perhaps just months. Um, yeah, so it, it's bound to be moving. Four Seasons in Rome on Twins Insomnia in the Biggest Funeral and the biggest funeral in the history of the world. Uh, so by Anthony Doerr. So uh, this uh, this author was in Rome uh, when Pope Jean, uh, John Paul II died. So that, that's what he means by the biggest funeral in the world. A celebrity memoir, I like those once in a while, Shockaholic by Carrie Fisher. I've read her, I think it was her previous one, which was, uh, what was the title? 
um, I forgot the title of the preview, Confessions of something like that. Um, I No, not, not Confessions. I don't remember. I read another one by Carrie Fisher. It was super good, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, another celebrity memoir, As You Wish, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes and Joe Layden. I suppose that Joe Layden is the ghostwriter. So a memoir about a movie, it's, it's a movie that I love. I really like The Princess Bride. Um, a classic of memoirs, of food memoirs, Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. I've never read uh, that book and it's supposed to be one of the best food memoirs ever. Men We Reaped, a memoir by Jasmine Ward. Um, this, is, this is about uh, life as black people in the United States. She talks about, um, let me read you some uh, little bits of it. Um, in five years, Jasmine Ward lost five young men in her life to drugs, accidents, suicide, and the bad luck that can follow people who live in poverty, particularly black men. So it's about dealing with these losses, it's about society in the United States, and it's about a whole bunch of things. A Hairdresser's Experience in High Life by Eliza Potter. Uh, this is a memoir of a woman who lived in the 19th century in the United States and she was a hairdresser. So she went to the, the houses uh, and I guess she was a servant uh, in um, rich people's houses, very rich people in the United States, so the, the upper class. And um, what is particular about her is that she was black. Uh, so this is the story of a black woman who was not a slave. And not just that, not only was she not a slave, she had a position in society. She had her own business, um, a certain amount of independence, and her, uh, her expertise was recognized by people. So uh, it's a different point of view. It's a, dip a different take on uh, life um, for black people in the 19th century in the United States. Um, a short travel memoir, Havana, A Subtropical Delirium by Mark Kurlansky. The Girl with Seven Names, A North Korean Defector's Story by Hyeon So Lee and David John. So as the title says, it's the story, the memoir of a woman who escaped North Korea. Um, what else do I have that is of interest and that I may read? Garlic and Sapphires, The Secret Life of a Restaurant Critic in Disguise by Ruth Reichel. Uh, so the author is uh, a food critic for, I believe, the New York Times. And the thing is, if she goes as herself to the restaurants, um, the, the people in the restaurant will recognize her. Not, not the crowd, but um, the, the, the cooks and the managers, they will recognize her. So chances are the experience she will have in the restaurant will not be the same as an ordinary restaurant goer. So she disguises herself to make sure that her visits are in a way anonymous, that uh, that her experience is the same as any other casual restaurant goer. Um, and so this is a food memoir and a restaurant memoir. And finally, uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is Yarn Harlot, The Secret Life of a Knitter by Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Uh, so uh, the, the little blurb says, one woman shares hilarious personal stories of her obsession, frustration, recollection, and fun with knitting. I haven't knitted anything in a while, but I, 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 I love to knit. Um, thing is, I had problems with my wrists uh, after the pandemic, after I had to work from home on the kitchen table in an unergonomic setting and I had wrist problems and since there since then I've been sort of fearful of starting to knit again uh, because that's the thing when you start to knit you don't stop <laughs> you cannot just do oh I'll do five minutes no no you, you knit and again and more and more one more row one more row one more row and you can't stop it's very addictive um, it's very fun <laughs> it's a good addiction it's a good addiction uh, so th that could be another fun memoir uh, so uh, that's it <laughs> that's it I'll stop this video that is probably going to be endless um, because I've filmed it in four little segments I don't really notice it but I'm pretty sure the, the end result is going to be uh, well over 30 minutes long. Um, so all of this to say that um, there are memoirs and biographies about pretty much everything. And even though I've probably talked about 50 books, there are subjects that I'm not talking about at all. I don't have a single memoir about people working in science, memoirs or biographies of people working in science. Um, I don't have a lot of political memoirs or biographies. Uh, what else do I don't have? I don't have any memoirs about um, motherhood or parenthood, family life in general. Uh, I don't have any memoirs of... Um, I was, I was about to say I don't have any memoirs of disease, but I have one about AIDS, so that, that, that is definitely a disease. Um, 
yeah, but anyway, uh, oh, sports, that, that's what I don't have. I don't have any biographies of sports, sportsmen, sportswomen. Um, um, and anyway, th there are just so many fields in life that you can find memoirs and biographies about anything that interests you. So this is just a tiny sample of all the, the, the thousands and thousands of books that you can find that could interest you. Um, the other thing is, I I've been thinking about this uh, in the past few days as I borrowed all of these books from the library because uh, I go to the library on foot, so I did not carry all these 20 books with me in one time. I went to the library, brought four or five books, and I thought, okay, that's good. And then the next day I would go back to the library and bring back another four or five, and I think, okay, I'm good now, I have 10. And then I did that three, four, five times, and now I have like 20 books <laughs> that I can possibly read. Um, but the thing that I realized while I was doing all of that was that I borrowed mainly memoirs. And same thing, my list of biographies and memoirs on script, it's mainly memoirs. There are more memoirs than that. there are biographies, classic biographies. And yet, you've heard me say more than once on this channel that I don't like memoirs. I, get, I have to say it's not true, but in a way it's true that there are plenty of memoirs that I don't like. And um, and for the BookTube prize, uh, the, 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 this is a, a prize where if you're a judge, you don't choose your books and you read the books that you have to read that, that, that are part of the group that's been attributed to you. And that's it. You have to live with it and read the books. And when there are memoirs in the group, I always think, oh no, not a whole bunch of memoirs again. So uh, I think what I'm going to do in this month of April is to read many memoirs, um, as many as I can. So probably there will be rather short memoirs because the longest one will take too much time. But I, I want to read many memoirs, different types of memoirs on different subjects by different people coming from different places. And I want to figure out what it is that makes me like a memoir or not like a memoir. I kind of have an idea, like somewhere in there, this fuzzy idea that I think I know what makes me like a memoir or not. But as I read, I want to refine that idea, make it more precise and be able to present and say, I like memoirs like this. I hate when memoirs do that. And that I can be able to say what type of memoirs I like and what type I don't like. Um, and perhaps if I weigh things, are there more things that I like and things that I don't like? I, I will be able to gauge more accurately if it's true that I don't like memoirs. <laughs> uh, because obviously you've seen all my pile of possibilities. It's full of memoirs and I'm attracted to these books. I want to read these books. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an experiment, I think. I'm going to read tons of memoirs to see if I truly don't like memoirs, um, if I really, truly don't like them, I'm going to stop after a couple of weeks, I guess. <laughs> I won't torture myself forcing me to read books that I don't like. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, that's going to be my experiment. Um, I'm going to read biographies too. Of course, I'm going to read this a biography of five women. Um, but uh, I'm going to read memoirs. I think I'm going to focus on the memoirs and really think, what do I like about this? What do I don't like? Um, and yeah, so tr try to understand my reading brain a little more, uh, why I like certain things or not. So that's going to be my little personal project for uh, People April. Um, so that's it. Let me know in the comments. Have you, in the comments, plural, have you read any of these gazillion of books that I've talked about? Uh, normally, I write them down in the description box. I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> There's just too many. <laughs> and uh, it would take me like a couple of hours. Uh, no, well, no, not two hours. Not if I do it on the computer. If I do it on the phone, yes, it would take me a couple of hours. But on the computer, I'm, I may do it uh, faster. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I've talked about a lot of books. And it's a lot of books that I haven't read. So I don't even know if they're good or not. But if you've read them and you think they're good or not good, let me know in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine! I just said à la prochaine and turned off the video and realized I forgot to say something. I want to say that I'm so excited that I'm starting now. <laughs> I'm not waiting for April 1 to read these books. I'm starting now. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to try to fit multiple readathons. I'm going to go towards uh, books written by women or about women so that it fits the uh, Her Storyathon um, readathon that is going on in March. But um, yeah, I I'm starting right now. I'm too excited. Yay! <laughs> and particularly, I'm going to start with uh, the books that are um, susceptible of being put on hold at the library and that I will not be able to renew. So I will start with the most recent books, probably. So um, that's that. Yay, that's it. Okay.
À la prochaine, Furby. <rire> Bye.